I'm Mark Hoke, and I've got to tell you about the incredible Family Soul Restaurant. They're the only soul food restaurant in Northwest Las Vegas, and simply put, they're the best in the city. Dan and his family have always treated me like I was a part of theirs every time we come in, and we never leave hungry. Start off with the amazing appetizers like their mac and cheese crab balls, crispy wings, and Dan's soul rolls. Then dive into Family Soul's dinners with homemade catfish, hot links, and fried chicken with all the amazing sides you could ever want and finish it off with homemade peach cobbler and banana pudding. Plus, they're now open for breakfast Friday through Sunday, too. So head on over to Family Soul Restaurant right now at 2300 North Rainbow Boulevard, Suite 108, just off the Lake Mead and Cheyenne exits of I-95. Check them out at FamilySoulRestaurant.com or call 725-205-5085 for hours in their menu. Mention KDWN and get the People's Choice Special of Catfish, Yams, and Greens for just $15.99. It's food for the soul and the family, Family Soul Restaurant. Hi, this is Mark Hoke. Has out-of-control inflation, gas prices, and grocery costs wrecked your wallet? Then check into automated day trading with Trading Made Easy. Trading Made Easy has spent five years helping people put cash in their pockets with their simple-to-use day trading software. So if you're ready to leave that 9-to-5 job behind, visit TradingMadEasy.com or call 800-971-4160 to sign up for a free live training seminar right now. That's TradingMadEasy.com. 1015 FM, 720 AM, KDON, the talk of Las Vegas. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the number one professional wrestling radio show in Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of wrestling news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises from inside the squared circle. Now, let's bring on the tag team of Andrew Fish Fame. Joe DeFalco, and your host, Mark Hoke. Oh, dear Lord. Sunday, Sunday, after a very bloody sports Saturday for many of us here on the Mark Hoke Show team. I I don't know if we're all still hungover from that one. It was just not a good... Not a good day for many of our favorites, to say the least. Not at all. No. I'm Mark Hoke, Andrew Fish Vane, Joe DeFalco on the line, of course, from future stars of wrestling as we get ready to dive into two hours of the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment while Fish and I try to keep our chins up. Oh, brutal. Absolutely brutal. I, 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 I'll ask Joe if he had a better day, but of course... My Penn State Nittany Lions got mauled. The Bison blow a 21-7 lead and lose 23-21 to the evil Jackrabbits. The Dodgers die a painful death fish. Ugh. 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 Joe, did you have a better day? Yeah, I hit one of my bets, but uh, other than that, the Yankees blow a game and they're done. So I'm really excited to see like the the Padres against the Guardians. What a World Series that might be! Yeah, baseball's worst nightmare. <laughs> well, it could be worse. No, market wise, it was way too small a market for anyone to care or watch. Yeah. Well, it could have been worse. I think the Mariners would have been worse than Cleveland. Yeah, possibly. See, do, do you hear all this depression in here? That's why we need to just forget about it and talk about pro wrestling. Because wow, it was just. Yeah, that that was just a tough day yesterday for all of us. Oh God! But a lot of interesting stuff going on in the res- wrestling world, to say the least. And you know, there were so many places to start, but I guess you know, why don't we just start with what happened on Monday night, guys? Is WWE puts out another interesting episode of Raw? A few old and new faces popping up on our screens, guys. How about that? We got Brock Lesnar. Looks like going to be headed in to take on Bobby Lashley. He's back. The Good Brothers show up again to reunite with AJ Styles. So we had a pretty pretty busy day on Raw just on those couple of things alone. Um, let me start with you, Fish. Your thoughts on the returning superstars, Brock Lesnar and the Good Brothers. Well, Lesnar had to return because they need the big star for Crown Jewel because that's why the Saudis paid him all that money. I thought it was for Logan Paul. 
So the you know Brock Lesnar, Bobby Lashley in Saudi Arabia is obviously going to be one of the marquee matchups, along with obviously Logan Paul and Roman Reigns Great matchup. Uh, Never seen before ever. <laughs> and, and the Good Brothers was was a nice return for for AJ Styles to have backup and not having them have him join the Judgment Day. Joe, what what did you think? Here, a couple of a couple of big returns on Raw. Well, I, I don't know if the Good Brothers are a big return, uh, considering their last run in WWE. So I guess now they have a new solid uh, uh, six man option when they decide to do another faction warfare match i guess yeah i I would imagine that this time around they're not going to be used as such comic relief as they were last time yeah we've seen of course you know the the revival now ftr just kind of getting buried as comic relief and probably the most common you know the the best tag team in the world at this point uh between them and the usos and you know and the good brothers kind of got the same treatment too and you know They've been out doing impact in Japan and, you know, their usual stuff. And now they're, you know, back looking pretty solid. Uh, This is, you know, this is going to be interesting to see how that works out. But I think we're obviously setting up for a pretty wild match at Survivor Series coming up. So I would imagine we'll see the the OC with AJ Styles and those guys taking on. And, and I would imagine we'll throw Rey Mysterio in the mix. And well, Mysterio, well, and, Mysterio has now moved to SmackDown, so... Yeah, that was interesting. I was I was a little surprised about that, but uh, you know, I, I think we'll we'll get a decent match out of uh, out of this one at um, Survivor Series. You know, I'm sure Edge will be involved, and yeah, it could be a lot of fun. I mean, for, for it to be a war game, so you have to be a four on four, right? So the OC would have it's to usually bring five some, on five. Is it really five on five? Yeah, yeah. So the OC, if, if they're going to do it, they're going to have to bring more people in to, to these factions or make them bigger. Except for, for instance, maybe uh, Bloodline, which may be big enough at this point. Yeah. So yeah, but you no know, interesting return there. But uh, you know, Lesnar coming back, and and I got to say, I am excited about that with Lesnar getting to take on Bobby Lashley. And uh, you know, it was interesting they took the title off Lashley. Obviously, didn't want to make. I guess have Brock Lesnar fighting for the U.S. title. But are you guys excited to see Lashley and and Lesnar maybe and and hopefully start a a long feud? I think that would be pretty entertaining. Well. They they met at what was it the Royal Rumble or Survivor Series last year when Lashley beat Lesnar? Yeah, and I, I think I think these two deserve the time together. I think th- th- that Lashley is one of the few guys on the roster that could credibly match up with Brock Lesnar. Joe, what are your thoughts about this? So you know where where do you think you, this should be taken? Uh, I haven't really thought much of Lashley of, of late. He seems to be just kind of like. As what happens when they have so many guys again, it's like uh, I was watching in SmackDown and they're, they're talking about a four way with Cross and Solo Sokoa and with Strowman back and and with Bray Wyatt back. It's like wh- where are all these guys going to fit? What kind of matches are they going to have? And it's like rehashing Lashley and Lesnar, and it's like yeah, it could be a long feud. It could be a year long, and they'll have two matches because Lesnar doesn't wrestle any matches. Yeah, uh, and you know, and you bring up another point that we're going to get to about the rosters, uh, but yeah, of course the the return of Lesnar set, sets up Seth Rollins to win the U.S. title. Uh, good, bad, or indifferent on that, guys. So he's now the top guy, I guess, on Raw because there is no world championship there. That is correct. So you and know, again now, yeah, now we have another fresh matchup on Monday. Seth Rollins gets to wrestle Matt Riddle. I've been looking forward to that. <laughs> <laughs> it just never stops, does it? Um, yeah, I, I'm, I mean, I'm good with Seth being there. I mean, I, I thought it was kind of an obvious setup the way they, the way they did it with Riddle, um, you know, winning that match at Extreme Rules, and you know, you turn around, Lesnar's coming, you hear all that, and yeah, it's, I don't know. Uh, I don't but know. I, but we I, just fin- I thought we didn't we just finish the feud with Rollins and Riddle. I don't understand. I. You know, I think there's been some questionable booking going on, to say the least. There has, but the one thing that I've noticed from WWE is that they're trying to have more continuity than they used to have. And they've, they've even hired a guy who is a Hollywood script writer to, and he's, his, I think his title is like long-term writer. So he's the guy that's looking out for continuity to make sure that when things happen or things have happened in the past, they get mentioned and not good, completely glossed over. Well, it's funny you mentioned that because I, I did have that as one of the topics I wanted to talk about. 
and I guess before we get into Bray Wyatt on SmackDown and you know showing up and doing his thing, it, that gentleman's name is Rob Fee. That's the guy. And Rob Fee has been hired as director of longtime creative for WWE. Uh, he was a horror writer, worked for Marvel, uh, has done a lot of stuff. People really liked his work. He's done comics with uh, Spider-Man, Daredevil, Avengers, a bunch of Disney stuff. So, and and I think that especially with Bray Wyatt, having someone around like that to kind of keep an eye on things and is really going to keep consistency in these stories. Because one of the complaints that, you know, we've all had with WWE is they'll do something for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden, poof, it's over and you're done. And it doesn't make any sense. You know, they leave it hang and... And I think that this is an interesting hire by WWE to make sure that those kind of things don't happen and keeps everything on track so you have better long-term storylines, which is what AEW was doing for a long time until all these injuries hit and broke all that up. So, you know, I mean, your thoughts on on Rob Fee? I think it's a brilliant brilliant idea because I think one of the things that was the issue was that, yes, wrestling fans are, are there and we need to suspend disbelief, obviously, for things that are going on. But when they make it absolutely ridiculous and they make it so you, you know, you uh, a storyline happened and then you're supposed to forget it when future events happen, to have someone there who's making sure that everything gets mentioned and, and it goes and there's a some sort of semblance of a storyline, I think is a great idea. Joe, what do you think of that? I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I don't, I've never heard of the guy, so it, there's also... They they hired this guy, but it still goes through Triple H. And like I said, so if his first job should be, you know, the storylines, well, didn't we just see Lesnar and Lashley? And didn't we just see six months of Rollins and Riddle? So why are we seeing it again? I thought the feud ended. I thought, you know, Riddle won. He, he, he got his win finally after Rollins beat him. So now we're going to just go back and have Rollins win again. It's like, how does that benefit Riddle in any way? Yeah, I, I, I didn't even realize that they were that they had matched. They they were set to match up on Monday night. Yeah, I even I saw it. a thing on it. Unless I'm incorrect, but I saw some stuff that they had, and it, and I saw Rollins and Riddle. So again, see it on Facebook. Sometimes it isn't uh, necessarily true, I guess, but I. I kind of assumed, which ain't the best thing to do, that it was a WWE <laughs> thing uh, because it was the same spot where I saw the four-way, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Two FSW guys are in the in a match together, Cross and Solo Sokoa, but how that makes any sense is beyond me. Yeah, and of course they got Cross out of the match by an attack and changed that yeah. up some. But we'll we'll talk about SmackDown in a minute. But Fee, but Fee was the one that was in charge of the whole White Rabbit promotion which got everybody talking so you know like i said it's you know it's a it's a progress it's it's a um shall we say a work in progress yeah and it, i mean it, i guess he'll be put to the test it'll be interesting to see what happens on monday when you have the dexter loomis Miz match that is dexter loomis either gets a contract or he's gone which we, we know is going to happen. Yeah, we know he's going to win. Gonna yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, so. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm hoping he's done so I can use him at Mecca. <laughs> Joe was, always has an interest in these things, doesn't he? It's unbelievable. And of course, this is the Mark Hoke Show on KDWN, 101.5 FM, 720 AM, the talk of Las Vegas. And we are bringing, bringing you the best in pro wrestling news and entertainment. Uh, just to kind of wrap up Raw, uh I don't know. I mean, otherwise, you know, Sami Zayn doing his thing again. You guys still liking the the Sami Zayn storyline things happening on that? I do. I'll be interested to see where they go. They kind of threw a curve with when they made all, everything all kumbaya on Friday night versus the way it was on Monday. But Joe, you're you're still liking Sami Zayn in the direction of that group. Absolutely. You know, he's been entertaining with Solo coming in. He's kind of been. Uh, you know, aligned a little bit with them. You know, I could see Sami Zayn and Solo Sokoa beating the Usos for the tag titles. That would be interesting. That would be great. Hmm, there's a thought. Joe DeFalco looking to get a booking job. You are right. Riddle to challenge Seth Rollins for the U.S. championship on Monday. 
Okay, there you go. Now, if they had Solo and uh, Sami Zayn wrestle for the Raw Tag Titles, oh no, that's right, it's Universal. Oh well, forget it. Yep, forget it. <laughs> and you know, then headed over to SmackDown. Before we get into Bray Wyatt and all that, there there were a couple of interesting things that happened with SmackDown this week. With uh, you know, Sami Zayn after losing on Monday, it gets the win on Kofi Kingston. And <laughs> kind of funny way how they wrap that up because Jay Uso, who didn't help Sammy the last time because Sammy told him not to, helps out, and then everybody acted like Sammy or Jay didn't help. Well, they, I mean, there was a big hug in the ring afterwards, and everything. There was all of a sudden Jay and Sammy looked like they were besties on Friday. That's that's why I was confused as to what they were doing with that storyline. Yeah, th- there's you know, there's going to can't have him be the antagonist every single show. They got. He's got to like make sure his his boss Roman Reigns is happy with him. You know, he gets kicked out if uh, you know he keeps disobeying. You know, the bloodline. Yeah, and one other thing that happened on SmackDown too that I wanted to throw out there is La Knight has you know, wrestled Mansoor and or Mansoa, pardon me, and is broken completely broken away from the Maximum Male Models thing. And it looks like we're going to get a dose of L.A. Knight on SmackDown for a while, too. And, of course, you know, we loved him as Eli Drake. And, you know, he's been a very good wrestler for a long time. Do you guys see, but the question is, with everything going on, do you see a future for L.A. Knight here? I, I think he's a, he's a going to be a, a good mid-card guy. But the problem is right now the guy who's in, in, in ahead of the mid-card is, you know, Gunther. And I, I, I couldn't see L.A. Knight beating Gunther. Just like I can't see Rey Mysterio beating Gunther, and the fact that he's now the number one contender for the IC Championship just seems ridiculous. I didn't like that either, uh, Joe. But Joe, you, you've been following Eli Drake's career a lot. What do you What do you think about the uh, LA Knight? Well, I, I think it's great. I said from day one, it was horrendous. It's like when you manage a job or team. If you're a manager and you can't even stack up any wins there there's absolutely no future you know i'm pretty certain we're kind of seeing the last of the male models and he's the only one who is is making the cut and yeah he is a solid mid-card guy and there's also storylines that don't need to involve the title and i think with uh you know his his promo ability and mic work, you know, he can he can have a big time feud with uh, Madcap Moss and Happy Corbin down the line. <sighs> like I said, I'm still waiting for that because you know they they kind of left that on a cliffhanger too. Happy Corbin leaving that what like three or four weeks ago with JBL. And we haven't heard anything from him. Well, that was that's the good part because hopefully it'll be six months before we get to see Happy <laughs> Corbin back. You know. <laughs> Oh, you guys just hate that guy. That's unbelievable. You know, but I, I tell you this, I feel very bad for Mansoor, Mansoa, the man man. I was watching that on on Friday night when he came those guys came out to the ring. And I'll be frank, Mansoa looked like an idiot. I mean, this is a yeah. guy who, you know, has been it's the Saudi Arabian superstar that, you know, got the has gotten the rubs at Crown Jewel. And they had him in a frilly, lacy top thing with a goofy pair of shorts on. He just looked like a dope. I, I mean, mean Ma- Mace, Mace, whatever you want to call him, is Mansois. I know, but Mace is Mace the same. Is, is, is the same thing. Yeah, it, it just those are two, especially with the possibilities of marketing for Mansoor. I'm, I'm just going to call him Mansoor from now on. It, it's. I think it's really sad that you put him in such a tear, and 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 this is this one's still a holdover from Vince, and I'm I'm amazed they just didn't yeah, scrap the whole thing. The, the only story, the only storyline that they've ever done with him that made sense to me at all was the the issues he was having with Mustafa Ali, mm-hmm. and I thought that was an interesting storyline. The way they were trying to get. You know, he did, uh, Ali was trying to teach him how to be as not to be just this goody good guy who just follows all the rules and had, you have to sometimes you have to break the rules to be able to win. And I thought that was an interesting rub the the, the two the, the, when they had those two together. But that was about that was the only little short break in time that they had anything good for Mansoor. Yeah, and, and it's a shame because he's. Under- oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, John. I was going to say what you got to understand is Mansoor would have never been signed if they never did a show in Saudi Arabia. They try to have a tryout. The guy paid for his own tryout. He he got trained up in NorCal, but 
he presented himself, great move on his part, but he was never anywhere ready for the main roster. He wasn't nearly good enough. He was green when, you know, he went over to Saudi Arabia, but they saw, hey, we can have this Saudi Arabian superstar guy, and he had him win the Battle Royal, and it was like bringing him up. He, he was never good enough to be brought up, in my opinion, at least, and it's like they threw him into something, and it ain't working. See you later. Thanks for coming. Kind of goes in the gender Mahal yeah, it was exactly. Trend, you know, and for the well, you know, no, Jinder I, I Mahal was Jinder. was the uh, an Indian wrestler who, when they went to go on a tour of India, ended up As getting the the world championship. championship dropped on him out of no, out, literally out of nowhere in a little quick feud with Randy Orton, and now Jinder Mahal has fallen back down and is doing nothing. Is being a jobber well. again. But but if you look at him and he comes out of an airport, you're like, holy crap, this is some big dude. He is. You know, the the other guy looks like, you know, he's the guy that might give you your beer at the arena. Good point. Yeah, it's. It, I think it's going to be very interesting to see how Triple H manages all these pieces. And we'll, we'll when we come back on the break on the other side, I want to save that topic. But because yeah. I mean, there are more people he wants to bring in, including me. A year my here is uh, on the verge of coming back. Yeah, there's a lot. I mm, we're, we're getting uh, Tony Khan syndrome here, very much so. Real quick, oh, and, I'm well, just waiting for him to cut like 20 people. But a lot of it's because Triple H is bringing back people that Vince cut to spite Triple H. Yeah, and, and yeah, like I said, we'll we'll get into it because that that's a pretty long topic. But uh, the last thing I want to hit is Bray Wyatt's promo at the end of SmackDown. I'm sure it looked like it did a pretty good number to say the least. But Bray Wyatt, another comes out and actually seems like he's pouring his heart out yeah. to everybody, and then kind of a little psycho thing at the end of it. And you know, we're hearing that there's going to be a Wyatt Six where all his characters are coming to life. This is, I I didn't know what to think of this, to be honest with you. I like the promo. I think that it was going to be the one time you're going to see him, basically, because he knows that the reason why he came back is because everybody wanted him back. And that was his way of, of acknowledging that that's why he's back. Well, Joe, what did you think of that? Because I, I guess it seemed to me, I mean, I know that he was trying to do that, but at the same time, it's like they're trying to set up a, a different couple of different sides to him and... You know, like we did with you know the 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 Firefly Funhouse guy, and then being the fiend, and now we have this really nice Bray Wyatt come out, and then this psychotic message. I, you know, I don't know. I I just I think the one thing they got to be careful of is that they don't want to convolute this thing too much and make it way too complicated for professional wrestling. Well, the minute he came out and he started the promo, I was thinking to myself, man, this is kind of weird. It's really going to have to, like, I expected him, you know, it, it's always like that. I'm retiring speech and suck people in and then you give him the swerve. And it was just like, you know, he was going on and on about being thankful and, and it seemed pretty genuine, but that didn't seem to be the promo that should have been done on SmackDown. The only thing I could get excited about is if the if the new masked person under there isn't Bray Wyatt and it's his brother Bo, who's one of my favorites, and they do something with Bo Dallas for once. And, and Bo is actually supposed to be back, and I'm sure we'll get into that when we talk about the White Six. Yeah, absolutely. So, so yeah, so I thought it, I thought it was I thought it was interesting, you know, the thing at the end because it left a lot of open stuff. But I think they really genuinely gave him an opportunity to basically thank the fans, and that's something you normally wouldn't see from that type of character's promo coming back. You you know, so but again, they're doing a lot of different things now with Triple H, so it's not the old WWE anymore. No, it's not. So. We'll see where it goes, but we'll talk more about WWE. And, of course, we've got a lot of AEW stuff and a ton of things happening outside of pro wrestling as, or outside of the ring as well. But I uh, do want to mention real quick, guys, hey, if you want to make some money this weekend, we would love to have you hop on to the betonline.ag train where you can get a massive bonus, 50% up to $1,000. And you can bet on anything on that site, wrestling, the football bets are up. Snooker, auto racing, darts, financials. It's unreal, this site. 
go to MarkHokeShow.com. Click on one of the links we have on the page. You'll see them, you know, a sponsor page, a front page, and sign up for your account today. All right. We're going to be back more on the Mark Hoke Show here in just a little bit. When it comes to having the right attorney in your corner, you want to have a proven winner on your side. And Russell Dutch Boyd of VegasCouncil.com knows how to win in Las Vegas. Boyd graduated at 18 years old from law school and is also a three-time World Series of Poker bracelet winner. And no matter what legal challenges you're facing, Boyd will help you through it all. As a litigation attorney, he covers multiple areas of law, including personal injury, business law and startup, cyber law and crypto clients, and whatever else you might need to navigate the legal waters of Las Vegas and beyond. Just visit VegasCouncil.com to set up your free initial consultation today. That's Vegas, C-O-U-N-S-E-L dot com, and let Dutch Boyd help you win today. Once again, that's Russell Boyd at VegasCouncil.com. Tired of the same boring food when you're out for breakfast or lunch? I'm Mark Hoke, and I have an idea for a different place to go with unique food you're sure to enjoy, and that's Unique Eats. Take some time out of your busy day and stop on in to Unique Eats, featuring celebrity chef Dominic Tedesco and his friendly staff. Whether it's a great start to your day with one of Unique Eats' amazing omelets, for lunch with his incredible sandwiches, pasta, and award-winning pizzas, you'll be in for a fantastic dining experience that won't break the bank. Unique Eats also features there's a smoothie bar and full vegetarian menu as well. Plus, if you need catering, you can count on Unique Eats no matter what the occasion. So what are you waiting for? Get on over to Unique Eats at 3100 South Durango, Suite 100, open daily until 3 p.m. Call them at 702-992-3038 or visit UniqueEatsLV.com for their full menu and catering info. Break out of the same old routine and have a great meal at Unique Eats today. 1015 FM, 720 AM, Don, the talk of Las Vegas. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. I'm Mark Hoke. Want to wrestle? I'm wrestling heavyweight right now. You want to go fish? Told you I'm saving my time for Vandergriff. Saving your time for Vandergriff. Unbelievable. I'm Mark Hoke. <laughs> Joe DeFalco, Andrew Fishfain. Joe, what do you think of that? Do you think Vandergriff uh, should take on Andrew Fishfain for your No Limits title? Uh, yeah, he's got to get by Kenny King first, but, you know, that's no small order. I think you should make it a triple threat. I'm there. Yeah, that Joe's got a. For those that don't know, of course, Joe runs Future Stars of Wrestling here in Las Vegas, and next week, Sunday night. What a this, great card, man! This card is absolutely loaded. If you want to see some amazing wrestling, Mecca Eight at the Silver Nugget Casino on Sunday, October third, five p.m. Main event coming up: Hammerstone, Chris Bay, and Brian Cage. For the Mecca title, this yeah, is Mecca. You know, that's you know Brian Cage has come back from the milk carton on AEW. Yeah, he has, and uh, Cage is looking really good. People are like, oh, I didn't know Brian Cage could do that. I'm like, well, we did, of course we <laughs> did. But that's going to be an outstanding main event. You know, Carlito's going to be there. He's teaming up with Chris Masters. That's going to be a lot of fun. Vandergriff, Kenny King, uh, Davy Richards is uh, wrestling Gregory Sharp for the Nevada State Championship. I mean, this is going to be an amazing night. So go to FSW Vegas and get your tickets. If you can't be there, you can also watch this thing on Fight TV, too. So get Joe some money. I think it would be a good idea. You know, it's it, it's matchup. You want to talk about the Forbidden Door. We got one of the hottest guys in New Japan now, Tito Escondido, wrestling one of the hottest guys in AEW, Toa Leona, part of the embassy, and along with Brian Cage. And they're both going to be on the show. We got two champions from MLW. We got Impact wrestlers, Ring of Honor wrestlers, former WWE wrestlers. We got literally talent from every major wrestling organization in the world. Yeah. So once again, go to fswvegas.com, get your tickets. It is going to be a great night here in Las Vegas at the Silver Nugget. And, uh, well, yeah, this is going to be fun. Fish? 
I may have to. Yeah, get the night off. Let's all go. We got, I, uh, we got, we got guys in the booth over here. The, the, we, the, only, the only problem is, again, if I run into Vandergriff, I'm going to have to take him out. I may we'll take just wait till after the match. I may take you out. Before. I'll, I'll do a run in it. I'll protect- do a run in after the match. I like I'm, the I like the way this this is playing out. I'm protecting Vandergriff. Joe, we got to work on that. I think that'd be kind of funny. But anyway, uh, <laughs> so, and back to uh, back to WWE and everything happening there. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about this Wyatt Six, and there's a lot of questions about who's going to be in, if if this is going to happen. I, Who's isn't getting that involved? his Twitter? Isn't this? And I think that Bo Dallas is is involved. I think there's no question. He apparently he's already been signed. They're just trying to fit him, figure out where they're going to fit him in. I think he is definitely part of the Wyatt Six. As long as they don't bring back Curtis Axel, we're good. You know, I I'm gonna I'm gonna defend the the Mister Hedig. I'd love to see him back. I really mm-hmm. would. I don't know why I, I can't understand why everybody hates him so much. You know, I, I I think he's been he's been misused a lot, but that's just me. He he has as much charisma as Ted DiBiase Jr. Well, you know what? Put him in a team. I'm down with that. I'm seriously down with that. But I but there but there have been other names and I hate to even say someone threw their hat into the ring or maybe their bikini top or their towel or whatever Joe's she's favorite. wearing. Could you guys believe that Eva Marie said, "I want to be, I want to be Sister Abigail"? Eva Marie. This is everybody wants to jump on the Bray Wyatt bandwagon. Joe, you you've been calling for her return on this show for a year now. You are you are an Eva Marie guy. Whatever could bring back my favorites, I'm all for. <laughs> it's just because again, if they bring back more people, there's a better chance that guys like Happy Corbin could be gone. <laughs> well, that's a good point, but you know, but let's let's talk about that roster situation in WWE because I I think one thing that we are seeing now, we you guys, uh, you know, we've all brought it up is AEW seems like they oversigned a lot, and now Triple H, we just keep hearing rumors. This person's coming back. That person's coming. Back. They have been bringing new people back and bringing back a lot of the people that Vince let go. At a, a really ridiculous pace, are we in danger of not having enough time for all these people? I mean, we're even seeing people getting shifted down to NXT, which may not be a bad thing. But no, I, th- I think the Triple H's idea is to bring all these people back so we can make cuts of people who were on the roster that aren't doing anything, that aren't carrying their weight. That's an interesting thought, Joe. What do you what do you think about this? That's exactly what it needs to be. It's like if, if, you know, we used to joke back in the day, and, you know, they talk something like a guy like Heath Slater, but it was like this guy was getting paid to, to sit at home. It's like how many guys can you do that? Give, give somebody else a chance. You know, if Happy Corbin can't get over three times, don't give him a fourth opportunity. There's there's a fresh talent out there. Like, you know, I thought what they did with Madcap Moss was working. And instead of being the idiot lackey for for Corbin, to me he seems like he has the opportunity to be a breakout guy. Where Corbin's had that opportunity and he failed every time he did it. So let's give the fresh blood an opportunity. Then you bring in, hey, it's ready made. Solo Sokoa, he fits perfectly. Boom, there's another guy who steps to the top. Then you sign Cross, and then you sign Strowman, and now you sign Wyatt again, and then you have Bo Dallas and. You know, whoever else you bring into that mix, and whether it's an Eric Rowan or, you know, when Dexter Loomis comes in, it's like you just can't keep bringing in people to be on TV. Like, I I haven't really seen Mad Cat Moss in a while, you know, and that's what's going to happen. There's going to be guys that are, are going to get lost in the shuffle just because there's not room for them because – Especially on SmackDown. SmackDown's not three hours. It's two hours. So if Roman Reigns is there, you know, the bloodline's got 20 or 30 minutes of, you know, an hour and a half because you got commercials. How many guys are really left to get the opportunity? And you can't get over if you're not on TV a lot. If you're on here and then you're on in five more weeks and then you're on in two weeks, that's that's the problem with an L.A. night. Are you going to give him the the reps? 
Are you going to give him, you know, three out of four SmackDowns to try to get that character over? Or are you just going to throw him in randomly and then say, see, we gave him a shot, but it didn't work. Yeah, and, and I'm looking at the SmackDown roster right now, both rosters, actually. It, and I I think that it's 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 a pretty interesting mix of who do you keep and who do you get rid of on here? Because, you know, you have like Angel Garza and, and Umberto. I mean, those guys... Yeah, you yeah. Could, you, those, you know, they they could say goodbye. Legado, that's why Legado del, Fant- del Fantasma is there, is to get rid of Los Lotharios. Yeah, so you just brought those guys up, too, this week. You know, Drew Gulak, uh, you know, you could let him go. I, you know, I feel bad for the guys that were War Machine that are now the Viking Raiders, Eric and Ivar, because they are... Those two guys are a really good team. They're well. They're, and, they're obviously doing they, something with them because they're they're having these promos with, and now with Sarah Logan probably added to them as well. Yeah, but hey, the th- another another group. Shocking. Yeah, yeah. the seven. The, I was just doing a thing. There's between SmackDown, Raw, and NXT. There are now seventeen factions in the WWE. But which you know, isn't a horrible thing because if you don't get to work. Your partners do, so you still get to be utilized on television. Exactly. You know, my issue with those guys, though, is that, and it, it's not them, it's how WWE used them. I mean, this is going to be their third or fourth run. And but, I know they got, I know there was an injury there. And that, that's, but, well, this run, this run is part of the run that just happened, and they were making them dominant because they were destroying the New Day, if you remember. Yeah. And then the injury happened. So I think. That this run now is the run that that needs that needs to happen, and War Machine is showing how good they really are. Yeah, and if you keep going down the list, you've got, you know, uh, let's see who else. Just picking some names out. Jinder Mahal's still on the roster. You, you know, they, see ya. Eh, yeah, they never use them. They'll use them once a year in India. Yeah, and, I mean, I'll be honest with you, and it's horrible to say, but if Big E can't come back, maybe it's time for the new day to to retire. Yeah, I, I think they're kind of. Uh, I think their shelf life is is kind of over with. I think I, they need something fresh. I kind of agree with you guys. I mean, that, and it's you know, I, I really don't know what you would do with either of them if you pull them out of the new day. I mean, that's that's kind of a that's kind of a trick there. Then you're looking at you know Masse and Mansoor. They're you gone. Know, the, the, totally misused their they be history. You know, we're waiting for Boogs to come back. Um, yeah, it was Shinsuke we haven't seen in forever either, actually. Yeah, and, and there's a there's a guy that they ruined, absolutely ruined, that I'm sure Triple H would probably like to see him make a run too. He was he's a Triple H guy. Um but then you you know, Shanky <laughs> okay. Right, but uh, I mean you you do need some of these people to fill out a roster when you do things like have a thirty man battle royal, for instance. You need to have some of these guys around just that can be in that match. Well, but here's here's where where if I was running things this is what I would be doing because we talked about they're shifting a couple people down to NXT, like you know Sonya Deville's going down there and wrestling. Yeah, like they now. did. They did with Apollo Cruz. My my issue with NXT is if you have too many people that are just raw and rookies down there, I don't think that it helps the TV ratings. I don't think that it helps in terms of their progression because you have. Rookies wrestling rookies. Right. You and, need them to, like when Dolph Ziggler went down there, you need them to wrestle a Dolph Ziggler to learn. So why not change the direction of NXT a little bit and make that more of a mix? Because the one, I think what made NXT successful in the black and gold days was you you brought in indie guys, but they were experienced people. You know, you got guys, you know, FDR in there. Um, and uh, I mean, just. I mean, it's a long list. Johnny Gargano, so many, so many people that yeah, knew it. That yeah, Adam Cole, uh, Bobby Fish, forty years old. You, you know, know, those were guys that wouldn't even get looked at when Vince re, you know, rehashed the new version of NXT, and that's why a lot of those guys left. And that, right, you you also have to understand saying, you know, young guys, rookie guys, green guys. A lot of these guys has experience, even though they seem like, no, because nobody knew who they were. But then when Vince kind of took it over, then it really became green guys because, you know, Solo Sokoa was still pretty green. Ron Breaker, I I, I never heard heard, um, him at all ever wrestling on the independent scene. No, he was totally fresh. And and, and Vince's Vince's direction for NXT was, we can make anybody a wrestler, and we're just going to grab athletes, 
from all different sports and you know people that just look really good, and we're going to make them wrestlers. And to his credit, and, he did it with Braun Breaker. I mean, obviously, well, he had but, the bloodline. Yeah, but Braun Breaker, of course, is the son of, the, of Scott Steiner. So, the son of Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner, sorry. So you have, you know, you've got some... Ta- some teaching there. Some blood, you got some bloodline? <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. But the question is, what do you do with Braun Breaker? At some point, he has to come up to the main roster, doesn't he? When he's ready. Yeah, I know. I'm uh-huh. not saying now, but it, 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 that's going to be yet another guy that it, that has going to have huge expectations, so he's got to have a spot. Yeah, and, he's, and, oh, he's no different than Solo Zakoa. He's, he's more than ready. He's built a name. He's got the the legacy bloodline of of his dad and his uncle. Braun Breaker would do just fine over, say, a Happy Corbin on the SmackDown roster. Yeah, it it's interesting because you know, I mean, looking at the SmackDown roster, it's not quite as bloated as we think it is because you got a lot of guys in factions and stuff like that too. But then you also got guys that are going back and forth, so. I mean the the raw roster to me kind of looks like a mess. More well, the raw roster is also you also have an hour uh, have an hour more with raw like Joe said. But what about guys like Bobby Roode who you know you don't see anymore? Yeah, I mean here's some names. I guess he was injured or something. Yeah, he was hurt for a while, but they still haven't figured out what to do. He, that's another guy that they've well they've never they never have for some weird reason. It's like he's really really talented, but. I think they brought him in and they perceived him as an old guy who can kind of help the younger guys instead of here's a guy that WWE fans don't know who's tremendous, who could be a major asset. So I don't know. And he was super hot when he came up from NXT. I mean, the glorious gimmick and everything. People Absolutely. Were, people I mean, were but even the that. gimmick with Dolph Ziggler, the, the, the dirty dogs or whatever, it worked. It was all right. Yeah. But you look at some names on the Raw roster, Tazawa. I mean, come on, really? You know, Cedric Alexander's a borderline guy. If, if he was in the Hurt Business, that was one yeah, thing. Yeah, I mean, but... apparently there's a new tag team they're putting together, which is uh, R-Truth and Shelton Benjamin. They've been doing it in a lot of the live shows. That's an, an I, interesting. Uh, you but... know, combined age of 103. Literally. Um, <laughs> and yeah. then it's like, what are they doing? They're trying to push Strowman against Omos? Or, or, or That's the way it looks. That? You know, we're recycling Elias again. Yeah, he's back on Monday. You know, um, well, he, he, he was hurt for a long time. Thankfully, uh, his brother Ezekiel helped hold up the fort for a while. Absolutely. Yeah. Kept the family name. I mean, Reggie is still on this roster. But you don't Almost see him. Almost is there. Uh, T-Bar. And, and there's a guy, T-Bar. Dominic Christopher Dijak. 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 Oh, my God. Why are they not using this guy? Yeah, that, I just don't Like I said, that. every match he had with Keith Lee was an amazing match. Yeah. But, you know, and I, like I said, I just ran down that list of the men anyway, and... No, there's really not that many, not that many guys that you can look at and say, "Yeah, that's a, a definite cut, for sure." It's and this is they've they've got. I mean, WWE's got a ton of talent there. It's going to be, but it's just hard to figure out but where but to in put reality. All. In reality, a Shelton Benjamin doesn't need to be there anymore. No. Well, they also you have know? to. Feel, I mean, they also are doing shows like Main Event where they have to have people wrestle that no one cares about. <laughs> Which you could use a mix of some of your mid to lower card guys and some of the NXT people. Just thought. Which is, I believe, they brought up uh, Cameron Grimes, I believe, for a they said a main event match. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's it's it, it's not. I mean, it seems like they're really super loaded, but there's really not that many guys right now. I mean, could you cut them? Yes. But there's not a lot of guys that are definite. Yeah, we got. Yeah, we got to clean the house. It's it's a weird spot. I mean, AEW is a little different because they they have brought in a lot of indie guys that just had no business being on TV. So it's this is tricky. It really is. I think. Fish, you, I'm not going to argue with you. Okay, don't argue with me then. That's good. Huh? I, I think that. if you put that whole list there, I could find 20 guys that should be gone. I and and well, that's probably about the number. You know, 15 or 20, somewhere in there. So, yeah. And then how many more guys? And, again, we haven't even talked about how many of the women that are on the roster. It's like, it seems like, you know, Zoe Stark maybe get called up sometime soon. And there's so many of them that, that they've had their opportunities. And I guess the Lacey Evans, and they tried to repackage her a couple of different times, and Nobody seemed to care. Yeah. And by the way, did you hear the rumor they're talking about bringing Chelsea Green? 
I heard that. They made a phone call to her, of course, Matt Cardona's wife. And uh, that's another guy that I, I think would be pretty intriguing if... Well, he actually he actually had an interview recently where he said, hey, if I see, you know, if my phone rings and I see it's area code 203, which is the Connecticut area code, I'll answer the call, but I'm not thinking about going back to WWE. Well, and he's a well, guy... Oh, go ahead, Joe. I was going to say, uh, I actually finally had a conversation with him because uh, he was at the GCW show. And what's funny to me is when... Impact came into town before the GCW, but after he became the hardcore king or whatever, and he did the thing with Gage, which was phenomenal, greatly done, he became probably the most despised wrestler in the business. And I remember going up to him during right, right before the the doors opened, and eventually he had by far you know twice as long a line for merch as anybody else, and. You know, normally when you talk to people and it's like, hey, you know, we're interested in using you, and we were we were talking. Usually there's a negotiation on numbers. Hey, I'm looking for this. Hey, I know you know him, and it's like he has a straight number across the board, kind of high, but it's a straight number across the board. And the thing is, Impact Matt Cardona is not worth half that, but because of everything he accomplished in GCW. And I'm not sure for other indies how he would work, but in GCW, he is huge. And I think if he goes back to WWE, he could be again because he's always been a guy who could talk. And he was a guy who did get over as Zack Ryder. I think if he ever came back, he would be Matt Cardona if he went back to WWE. And he is total business. Everything is how much money he's going to make. And he's got his podcast and he's got all the stuff. And he's making a lot of money because he's getting booked a lot on his on his whatever he wants. I want this, great. Get the merch money. They have to pay him a lot of money. Like he'd have to walk into at least I would say three quarters of a million dollars to go back to WWE. And the question becomes, do you really think that guy is worth it based on what he did in WWE in the past? Or are you gonna look at it as He's one of the hottest heels in the business right now. Will that transcend well, to the WWE? The problem is, is not even if he's worth it, because, yeah, he could be worth it, but do you have the time to invest in him being on TV and being seen to pay him that much money? Well, if they pay him that much money, I think they would have to give him the opportunity or they would have to invest in it, because if they're not, well, then that was a big waste of money. Yeah, but well, I guess it becomes at whose expense do you do you do that? Well, and, I, and to me, the other issue with with Cardona going to WWE is how many wrestling fans really know WWE fans at least truly know what he did in GCW and some of these other places. I would venture to say very few, and and so I would people, say more than we we used to think because we saw that when AJ Styles walked out and people went nuts and it was like who's going to know this guy from Impact? Yeah, that's I, a good point. I, I think it would be it would be a decent number, but is it enough for everybody to go crazy when Matt Cardona would show up at a WWE event? He might get an initial initial initially it would be a big deal, but I think that he has enough ability and I think his confidence levels at an all time high and it's like I think if you give him the ball, I think he's a guy who could be a major factor. Yeah, I think you have to cut the the whole woo 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 crap. Yeah, he's well, yeah, well he's yeah, not doing no, that. No, I, I know he's not doing that now, but the problem is when you bring him back and you said it, Joe, you cannot bring him back as Zack Ryder. You have to bring him back as Matt Cardona. <laughs> And you know how rare it is to see a guy who was really known in WWE, because he was as Zack Ryder, that five years later when he comes back, he's this totally different guy. I don't even look at Matt Cardona and Zack Ryder as the same person, personally. Yeah, and the question is, is does the Matt Cardona character translate into WWE? And that that would be the, the question that I'd have. He, he may be better off doing what he's doing, and just making the money and and having a great time, you know. I mean, Mox is in AEW, but he's got the same kind of attitude. You know, I'm gonna do what I'm gonna do. This is how I'm gonna do it, and that's it. So, pretty. It, it would be intriguing. And you know, if they brought him in with Chelsea, yeah, you, you got something. They, there. they they never gave Chelsea a shot. No, no. But that was that was the old regime. 
Oh, I know. So I don't know. Pretty, pretty interesting stuff there, to say the least. Uh, WWE's got a lot of decisions to make. And they have a lot of ways they can go. And, you know, we, you you brought up the Wyatt Six briefly, but you didn't mention any of the names that are being mentioned as being members of said Wyatt Six or even what it is. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we're, well, we don't want, do you want to get into that a little bit when we come back? Yeah, I think I think I think it, I think it bears talking about because it's it's because Bray Wyatt's return, obviously one of the biggest news stories in wrestling, and since probably CM Punk's return to AEW. Okay, so we'll mention that when we come back, and a whole lot of other interesting news stories. A lot of tight, I mean, just little little things going on that have been maybe leading to some major goings on WWE and AEW and we'll get into all that when we return to the Mark Oak show. Hey, we want to thank you for being with us. Of course, we've got Joe DeFalco, Andrew Fish Fane. We're going to get into our second hour here on KDWN 101.5 FM, 720 AM when we come back. Follow us on Twitter at Mark Oak Show, Facebook the Mark Oak Show, markoakshow.com. Of course, those podcasts, markoakshow.podbean.com. 55 countries and counting downloading those podcasts. We certainly do appreciate it. Hey, we'll see you on the other side of the break. Stick around for more on The Mark Oak Show. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show. Like us on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. And visit MarkHokeShow.com to keep up with everything happening with the show. And remember to check out all of our archive shows on YouTube at The Mark Hoke Show. And download our podcasts at MarkHokeShow.Podbean.com and all your favorite podcast outlets. So join The Mark Hoke Show family today, and thanks for listening.